Does switching to a split keyboard really improve typing ergonomics? How long does it take to learn a completely new typing style? In this video, I'm going to try and answer these questions by using a split keyboard for 7 days. If you want to see whether buying a split keyboard is for you, be sure to watch until the very end. The keyboard I'm going to use for this experiment is the Lily 58, a split keyboard with straight columns opposed to the traditional staggered ones. I felt this was a cheap and effective keyboard to evaluate the correlation between keyboard layout and ergonomics as it similarly follows the natural extension and height difference of her fingers. Anyways, as the name suggests, it has 58 keys and here's a quick picture of the keyboard's key mapping. The lower and raise keys allow the keyboard to switch to different layers when pressed, which lets me completely switch the functions of each key within a single key press. Everything is similarly placed in comparison to a normal keyboard, except for the enter key now being the right spacebar and the backspace moving to the bottom row. With my current keyboard, I can hit over 100 words per minute on type racer and over 140 words on monkey type. Unfortunately, I've been pretty stagnant at this typing speed due to my bad habits, like using my index finger to press spacebar, which leaves my two thumbs to do absolutely nothing. Hopefully, forcing myself to adopt proper typing habits while using the Lily 58 can help me also improve my typing speeds on a normal keyboard. To try and get used to the layout and ergonomics of a split keyboard, I'm going to spend some time every day practicing my typing skills. I'm going to spend 5 to 10 minutes on monkey type to practice typing words, 5 to 10 minutes on type racer to practice typing full sentences, and 5 minutes on speed coder to practice programming. Additionally, I'll also explicitly use the keyboard for everything I do on my computer, whether it be typing up homework or playing Valorant. To measure my typing skill for each day, I'll take my top 5 scores from both monkey type and type racer, and I'll take my best 2 scores from speed coder. At the end of the experiment, I'll create a graph showcasing my progression. After thinking about the key mapping, I decided to just make minor tweaks to the default one I was provided. I swapped the shift and control keys back to how they usually are as I don't see much of a benefit for swapping them in the first place. For my lower layer, I decided to fill up the top row with some extra function keys I can program to random useful keys or macros. Right now, I have the top row on the left hand side for media keys like changing volume and skipping tracks. Lastly, since I use a caps lock and WASD on my current keyboard for arrow keys, I decided to keep it consistent and put them on the left 4th row. Now that I have my keyboard and plans ready, it's time to start the 7 days. I was a bit too optimistic about easily being able to switch, considering the fact that I now have to take notes, type school assignments, do practice exams, and play games using such an unfamiliar keyboard. I've failed to realize how much I took my fast typing speeds for granted. The time it's taking me to do things has virtually doubled and it's been taking a toll on my overall productivity throughout the day. When I was typing notes for the book I was reading, my slower typing speed forced me to write concise jot notes instead of the elaborate thoughts I was used to, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Of course, the major issue I had today was the placement of the symbols. I got used to the letter placement fairly quickly, but I struggled immensely to type things like add and equals, which is in such a weird spot, man. If worse comes to worse, I might end up remapping it to where backspace traditionally is. Speaking of backspace, I've gotten used to its new location near my thumb. When I tried using my old keyboard, I kept pressing my right thumb on the spacebar out of habit. When I was writing my computer science practice test, I think I spent more time figuring out where the keys were than actually answering the questions. Also, it's kinda weird to give the pinky such little room to press keys. I'm used to the width of traditional modifiers, so now I tend to hit one key too far to the right when using shortcuts like copy and pasting. As ergonomics go, I like how easily I can pivot my elbow to switch between my keyboard and mouse. Previously, I had to switch my whole arm and bring it back, which was quite tedious when simply correcting small errors. I still have yet to designate the locations of my arms, but right now it's similar to my regular posture with my left arm straight and my right arm a bit turned towards it. Different profile keycaps haven't been an issue whatsoever and have even helped me with knowing where the numbers are. Seeing that my typing tests were done a bit later in the day, I was already a bit used to the new keyboard after hours of painstaking typing. Here's today's typing speeds. Now that I'm starting to get a bit used to the lily, I'll try out some of the new key locations presented by the different layers. 
Unfortunately, I didn't put much emphasis on using the unique mapping of some keys. On the bright side however, I began to quickly get accustomed to the new layout. I was able to peek at 80 words for both monkey type and type racer, but my speed coder results lagged behind and actually went down. When using it for my computer science practice testing, my growing familiarity and practice has made coding less of a burden. To further utilize the hotkey convenience this keyboard provides, I want to think of ways to cram as much hotkeys for my note taking app Obsidian on the left hand side. Furthermore, I also want to think about what to map these function keys to since I mainly just use the ones on the lower layer. Same goes with the arrow keys and blank keys. Later today, I'll try to also find a sufficient wrist rest that doesn't consist of presidential socks. Overall, I'm feeling surprisingly comfortable using this keyboard despite it only being my second day. Not gonna lie, I was surprised to see that my typing speeds haven't stagnated yet. I was able to hit 94 words per minute on monkey type and improve my overall averages across all three typing websites. I wasn't expecting to hit 100 words per minute between my first week of switching, but at this rate, I might even catch up to my previous typing speeds. I'm starting to grow an appreciation for the thumb buttons after getting used to them. It makes my thumbs more useful and makes doing things like hitting backspace and enter less tedious. Tomorrow, I'll actually get to thinking of possible optimizations when using this keyboard. I felt super sluggish typing today, but somehow I managed to hit new personal bets in both type racer and speed coder. If I alter my typing posture a tiny bit, I end up missing keys more often so maybe switching to keycaps with more sculpture will be more forgiving. As for possible hotkeys, I haven't had any inconveniences recently with the layout so I haven't been able to think of potential adjustments for the upper layer. Nothing special happened today, other than the fact that I hit 96 words per minute on type racer. I was curious, so I tried doing the 10 word option on monkey type, and I ended up hitting 120-ish words per minute. I guess my stamina is what's preventing me from getting high scores, so I'll have to consciously remember to maintain my pace. My dad gave me a wrist rest to replace my sock, and the extra width has helped with giving my wrist some more flexibility to move around. When I was doing my code typing, I decided to actually pay attention to the mistakes diagram and realized that most of my mistakes were from the right hand side. This makes sense, as when typing on a regular keyboard, I'm used to having my hand angled. Also, I think I'm experiencing fatigue with my left hand, which is not a good sign. I did it. I finally hit it. Oh! Oh my god! Yes! <sighs> on a standard keyboard, I'm able to type 100 plus words frequently on Type Racer, but I'm still proud of hitting 100 on Monkey Type nonetheless. I zoomed through the first part and had almost choked, but thankfully, I didn't. Although my monkey type score zoomed, my other ones didn't see much improvement. I decided to move the two halves even further and angle the right one a bit upwards, which might be the better play for long term ergonomics. Surprisingly enough, my 100 words per minute from yesterday was not a fluke seeing that I was able to do it again. I even almost hit 97 words per minute on type racer. No, wait, I actually did hit 97 words per minute on Type Racer. Speed Coder was still a struggle, but I feel like I still have lots of room for improvement if I start to use numbers and icons on different layers. However, I think it's important that I get the basics down, like letters and the traditional keys for symbols, which I feel super confident in now. It might seem weird, but telling myself to take it slow results in less errors and an overall typing speed faster than if I were to try and push myself. Alas, the seventh day ended, and so did the experiment. After strictly using a split keyboard for the whole week, I'm a bit curious as to how fast I can type with a regular keyboard. Yeah, the two typing styles are completely different. It'll probably take me a while to get used to a regular keyboard again. Anyways, here are my thoughts. First off, I'm super proud of myself for not raging and wrecking the keyboard due to my initial low typing speeds. 
Looking back, I'm surprised at how much I was able to adapt within just 7 days. So, after finally completing my 7 day experiment, here's my 2 cents on using a split keyboard. I think I was overestimating the ergonomic benefits of a split keyboard. Being able to split your keyboard is pretty convenient if you want your chest to be more opened up, but as far as health benefits go, I don't think there were many. With my old typing style, my wrists were already fairly straight, so that health benefit wasn't of much importance to me. Also note, these opinions are coming from a non-doctor that spends their whole days in front of a computer, so it's ultimately up to you on whether you want to take my word for it. As of typing this script, I think I enjoy the typing experience of a split keyboard a tad bit more, but that just might be me in the honeymoon phase when trying something new. I find the backspace and enter keys to be super convenient, and it's nice not having to move my hands too far away from the middle to hit keys. I already voiced my opinions through my journaling, but to see whether a split keyboard might be for you, here's some pros and cons you should consider. This one is more specific to the Lily 58, but if you're into mechanical keyboards, Building the keyboard and setting it up can be a fun and refreshing experience from the standard keyboard designs. If you want, you can also customize the displays, add encoders, or add Bluetooth. If you have bad typing habits like me, the split keyboard does a good job of forcing you to fix them. If it weren't for committing to this experiment, I probably would have never stopped using my index to press space. Like, never. Now, it's time for the cons. First off, if you've got some important deadlines coming up, processing and adapting to the new layout is going to be frustrating and time consuming. I guess if you were able to switch between the two keyboards it would be more doable, but it would also interfere with the learning process. Second, you have to spend quite a bit of money to try one out. A Lily is relatively cheap, but if you want something like a Moonlander or Ergo Docs Easy, it's going to end up costing you over like $400. Anyways, that wraps it up for my 7 day experience with using a split keyboard. If you haven't already, I would recommend you listen to the opinions of other people on reddit or watch someone else's video like switching clicks. If you found my advice to be helpful, be sure to like and share this video and subscribe for more content like this. Stay mindful.